Hello, Sister Lawson. How you doing? Good to see you tonight. Sister Leach and God bless you all. Hello, Sister Phelps. I hope the I hope your re recovery is coming along well. God bless you, ma'am. Sister Bernice, what's up, uh, Calvin and Sister Carrie? Bless you guys. Sister Baldwin, hello. Good to see everybody. I hope everybody had a good day. Sister Guiden, Brother Randall, Randall, Brother Dean, Green Grove, this is what the inside of our sanctuary looked like. I know some of y'all forgot. It's been so long since we've been in the church. Sister Ross, bless you. Oh, I'm glad that word bless you last night, sis. Amen. Amen. Y'all go ahead and text a call or a, a send a pigeon or whatever you need to do. Let folks know we're online. Let them know we're online. Sister King, hello. Let me put this on our church page real quick here. Sister King, Sister Campbell, hello, Sister Taylor, Carrie Taylor, bless you, ma'am. We'll begin starting in just a moment. I want to talk about uh, arrogance tonight. Hello, Sister Jerome. I want to talk about arrogance tonight. You're thinking more highly of yourself than what you ought to. Arrogance. Arrogance. Let's say, but let let your family and friends know we're online. Green Grove is online. Sister Brown, Sister Dean, hello. We're gonna pray in just a few seconds, Sister Sister Stripling. Happy Founders Day, Sister Stripling. God bless you all. Amen. Amen. Let's pray, family. Father, we thank you and we praise you for this uh, wonderful, wonderful day that you've all blessed us with, God and you. Uh, you kept us throughout this day. You brought us safely to this place of meeting again. And Lord, we just tell you, thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. And Lord, we just ask that by your spirit that you would teach us tonight, cause your word to be open to our understanding that we might be better leaving than we were when we arrived. Thank you for a spirit of unity. Keep us on one accord. That God, that we might see that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Allow us to see ourselves tonight, that God, if we need to add, subtract, or make some adjustments, that we'll allow the word to dwell in us richly to do just that thing. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Hello, hello, Sister Carter, hello, ma'am. Uh, Sister uh, Dennis, let me see here. Mother Mildred, bless you, ma'am. Uh, Sister Marshall, hello, my friend, and um, David Brown, bless you, bro, and Brother Baker, God bless you all. 
Uh, Sister McKenzie, bless you. I want to talk about, I want to talk about and deal with tonight um, arrogance. Uh, I'm sure we've all seen, uh, uh, some of you might be arrogant, uh, people that have uh, this exaggerated um, sense of worth and accomplishment, this exaggerated to the point where um, your importance is more uh, than everybody else. And, and you come across in your uh, importance in an overpowering manner. Um, some would say that arrogance is to be um, excessively proud. Uh, to have a haughty or a lauding type spirit. Um, it, it, it's, it's when you feel that you are superior to other people, when you, uh, when you are, uh, 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 carry yourself in such a way that it comes across like you're looking down on others. Um, um, everything about you is better than other people. Um, whatever you have, it's it's it. If you paid for it, it costs more than what everybody else had. Uh, if they bought the same thing, you got a better deal than they did. Whatever it is, your arrogance makes you think that you are uh, more intellectually superior. It makes you think that you may physically be more attractive. It makes you think that you are academically more astute. Your arrogance makes you think you are more than what you are. And the problem with arrogance is, is that most people cannot live up to the persona of arrogance that they betray themselves to have. Uh, um, you'll see people that have an arrogant outlook, that have an arrogant outlook, um, they'll say things like, what I have achieved, I achieved it because of me. What, what I have achieved, I have achieved it because of me, I, I'm so strong. I'm, I'm so, I'm so astute in my mind. I'm so sharp in my thought processes that I don't need anyone else's help. I, I am able to do good, and I have done well. And, 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 and all that I have, all of the credit belongs to me. And the problem with being arrogant is it puts you in many times in opposition to God. The problem with being arrogant is that it causes you to take some things that belong to God and appropriate them for your own self. The problem with being arrogant is it causes you to bump up against the glory of God and you start thinking that what really belongs to God you try to enjoin yourself to that and you try to carry yourself and walk in the glory of God or the, or, or the attention that the glory of God should only be receiving. And, 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 and so when you see a person that's humble, humble is just the opposite. Arrogance says all I've achieved, I did it myself. I'm strong, I don't need anyone else. Uh, I'm good and I don't need to share credit with anyone else. But when a person is humble, uh, uh, humility says that what I have achieved, I've only achieved it by the grace and mercy of God. Uh, humility says that, 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 that I am weak and I need God's strength to keep me. Uh, humility says I've achieved some good things in my life. I've done some, some great things in my life, but the glory and the credit belongs to God. And, and, and so what I, want, what I want to just share with you tonight is something that we really need to be careful about, uh, particularly in the body of Christ, uh, when God begins to bless us and to elevate us and to and promote us, uh, sometime we can start thinking more highly. We can begin to take on this persona that I'm more blessed than anyone else, that I'm closer to God than anyone else. I hear from God more than anyone. My prayers are more fervent. My prayers touch heaven. All of these things 
that 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 um that are or possibilities when a person uh, is in the body or names the name of Christ and they become arrogant. You think that if you didn't pray, nobody prayed. If preachers, if you didn't preach, no one preached. If, if choir, if I didn't lead the song, then the song just wasn't song right. The musicians, if I didn't play, they didn't hit all of the chords and the melody was off. All of these things that when you are arrogant, when, 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 well, she looks nice in her outfit, but you ought to see how mine is. That brother, he looks all right, but that suit came off the rack. Look how mine looks like it hangs like it was tailor made. All of these things are, 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 are things that can creep in if you are, are not careful even though you name the name of Christ, it is possible. And so what I wanna deal with tonight very, very, very quickly is I wanna deal with tonight, um, how does God uh, deal with arrogance and, and how does God think about arrogance? Uh, is, is, is being arrogant, is it okay? Is being ar arrogant, is it, is it, is it a, a compatible with, with, with being a Christian? Uh, to walk around with an arrogant persona? Is it is that permissible by God? Is that okay? So let's, I just want to go uh, through several scriptures here tonight. We're going to get some Bible calisthenics tonight um, to, to see what does the word have to say about God's thoughts on arrogant. So if somebody will put in the comment line, um, 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 Psalms, um, the fifth number of Psalms, uh, verse number four and verse number five. Psalms uh, number five, verse number four and five. I want you to see, and I don't want you to take my word because there are people who, who are arrogant, who are thinking more highly of themselves, who thinking that they are, they're, 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 they, they, they're so good that breath don't even smell in the morning. They don't even have to wash their face. It, it, it just, everything is just right when they go. Everything is right with them all the time. And, and it's you all who need to come up where I am or we are. And, and, and it'll cause you to think, uh, you have some distorted thinking. So let's look at, at Psalms uh, number five, verse number four and five. And the word reads, for thou art not a God, who takes pleasure in wickedness. No evil dwells with thee. The boastful shall not stand before thy eyes. In this fifth number of Psalms, the warning comes out to those who are arrogant that God will not allow an arrogant person or a boastful person to stand in his sight. Everybody see that? That, that God will not deal with. He, he, he straight arms, he keeps them away. He does not want them in his presence. So if I wanna carry myself like I'm better than folks and, and, more, and more astute and, 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 and I wanna carry myself like I'm, I'm above everybody else, uh, what I do now is I position myself where I may not even be able to stand in the presence of God himself. I may not even be able to get into the very throne room of God. And sometimes that's what's missing in our prayer life is that we have not humbled ourselves. We have not come to a place wherein we recognize that it is not about me, but it is about him. We've not come to a place where, where, well, I'm, I cease to be. This is where you have to come to. You have to cease to be impressed with your own uh, resume. You have to and cease to be impressed by your own news clippings because too many people, we, we wanna talk about I and, and me and my all the time. And, 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 and so God is saying, if, if, if you're gonna come into my presence and you're not, not gonna even acknowledge me, God says, I don't even want you in my presence because if I'm arrogant, if I'm, if I'm self-centered all the time, then I'm going to be in the presence of God, treating God or trying to treat God like God should be excited that I'm there. So the text says that God will not even allow the boastful to stand before his sight. Now, let's turn again. Somebody put this on the, on the timeline for me, on the comment line for me. Isaiah chapter 2, verse number 12. You go write these down so you can, you can go back over them later on. And, 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 and highlight them for your own self-protection and, and, and betterment. Isaiah chapter two, verse number 12. 
Isaiah chapter 2 and 12. Amen. Now, let's let's see what the word said. Let's see what the word said. Uh, God said the proud, uh, those with haughty spirits, those with arrogant spirits, he said they will be punished and humbled. Let's, let's see what the word says. Isaiah chapter 2 and verse number 12. For the Lord of hosts will have a day of reckoning against everyone who is proud and lofty and against everyone who is lifted up that he may be abased. So God is saying, he's saying, listen, if you are so high, he says, I'm going to deal with you in such a way that I have to bring you down. And that's one of the most uh, dangerous places that anyone can find themselves uh, because James in the book of James, James says, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. Uh, you, you never want to get to a place where God has to humble you. You never want to get to a place where it's God that has to bring you down. It is easier to, to bring yourself down. It's easier to get yourself back in check. And so that's what the text is saying. It's saying, it's saying, listen, there's going to come a day of reckoning. In other words, you might get by with that attitude and that disposition. You might get by with that, with that carrying yourself and, and acting like you're all of that in, in a bag of chips. You might be able to to, 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 you know, shine at the expense of other people. Uh, but there's going to come a day, the text says, wherein God is going to deal with uh, everyone who is proud and lofty, everyone who is lifted up, everyone that is higher than they are supposed to be. And so the text is giving us clear warning that we need to make sure we keep our feet on the ground that we don't get so lifted up in ourselves that we start thinking that we are more than what we really are. And it's nothing, it's nothing worse than being around somebody that's acting like they got it together when everybody can see they're about to fall apart. It's nothing worse than, than, than watching somebody who's trying to pretend they got all the answers when the reality is, is they don't even know the questions to the test. It, it is hard. It is hard to be around somebody like that. But God says there's going to come a day of reckoning where I'm going to deal with those who are proud and lofty, always in the air, always, always talking about what I've done and my accomplishment and my degrees and my bank account and my and you fill in the blank. And he, and, and, but there's going to come a day of reckoning. And, and, and so look, I want to go, let's keep moving. Just keep moving. Cause I don't want you to think I just picked two or three scriptures out, but I want to show you, I want to show you a, a, a thread line that runs all the way through the scripture, the old Testament. Look at Isaiah, the same book of Isaiah chapter 42, verse number eight, Isaiah chapter 42, verse number eight. Let's look and see what it says. Somebody put that on the comment line for me. Isaiah chapter two, verse number 48. Let's look and see what the word of God says about uh, uh, being proud. Uh, let's, let's look at this text and see what it says. Listen what it says. I am the Lord. That is my name. I will not give my glory to another, nor my praise to golden images. Do y'all understand what God is saying? God is saying, listen, when you're walking around acting proud and being arrogant, you are taking glory that belongs to God. You didn't keep yourself. You didn't wake yourself up. You didn't start yourself on your way. It wasn't you that kept you in good health and strength. It wasn't you that kept you in your right mind. All of those things were done to you by an all-powerful, all-knowing God. And God is saying, listen, in this verse, he says, I will not give my glory to somebody else. In other words, all of that, 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 that glory that belongs to God, he says, I am a jealous God. I'll have no other God before me. So whatever belongs to God, the best thing that we can do is keep our hand off of it. Whatever belongs to God, the best that we can do is, is to say, God, you take that. You, you, that belongs to you. So if you sing, whenever you sing, 
and, 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 and people coming up, patting you on the back. Oh, baby, you wrecked it with that. Oh, child, you killed it with that song. Don't you get in the thing and start thinking, oh, I sure did. And, and, and next Sunday, you got some shades on and, 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 and you walking around the church strutting and, and walking around and peacocking around the place because you preached a good sermon, because you prayed and messed around and prayed a good prayer. And now folk told you how well you did. And, 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 and instead of turning that stuff and deflecting it back to God, who belong where the glory belongs, you start absorbing that stuff and acting like that praise and that glory belongs to you. And so God says, listen, I'm not going to share. I'm not going to give my glory to someone else. He said, that glory belongs to me. And this, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me share something with you here that's going to help somebody. Sometimes your talent and your giftings open a door but you have shown yourself not to be trustworthy with the glory of God. Your talents and your giftings have, 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 have opened doors for you. You people want to hear you do this thing, but, 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 but you have proven how you carry yourself. You've proven how you respond to the praises of other people. You've proven that when God blesses you, you want people to think that you got it. When God blesses you, you want to be the big dog. You want to be the one. God says, you've proven that I can't trust you with my glory. So God said, watch what God said. He said, he said, he said, I'm not going to share that with anyone else. You've got to learn. you got to learn that when people start praising you for stuff that God has done in your life, you got to say, Lord, I thank you for sharing it with me, but all the glory belongs to God. And it's not, it's not a false humility that we're talking about. It's being genuine that, man, this thing belongs to God. All of this praise belongs to God. All of this glory belongs. Lord, I don't want to take nothing belong to you because I want to be trusted with your glory. I want to be trusted with, I want you to trust me that if you use me in a mighty way, that if you elevate me in a mighty way, that if you anoint me in a mighty way, that I won't steal what belongs to you when people start saying how well I perform, when people start saying how well I did. God said, I've got to be able to trust you with my glory because I'm not going to share it or give it to anyone else and the problem is is when we get in a place and you better hear me tonight when you get in a place where you start receiving praise when you start receiving praise and you know it was god who blessed you you know it was god who did it don't come in there well we're the lord no you better give the glory back i'm telling you give the glory back to god who was it who was it? You you know you wasn't the smartest person on your job, but you got promoted anyway. You know that you 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 barely made it out of school. Come on, somebody. I know I'm not the only one on here. That that if if my wife wasn't sitting next to me in college, I don't know what if I would even graduate. But, but but I had to understand. And so now I look back over that thing and I say, God, how can you use me the way that you do? And, and I got sense enough to know that I'm not the smartest one in the room all the time. I got sense enough to know that I'm not the, 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 the highest and I don't have all of the intellect. I got sense enough to know that. And God is saying, I want you to give that glory back to me. But the problem is, is if I get that glory and boy, you all know, and I know, I know you understand it, but boy, when, when you start, when folks start praising you and telling you how, woo, that stuff will start messing with you. I'm telling you. It, it start, let me show you what I'm talking about. It, it'll mess with you to the point where you start trying to take what doesn't belong to you. Now, now, now watch this. If you remember Satan, Lucifer in the Bible, the Bible says that he was lifted up in pride. The Bible says that he began to think within himself that, I, man, I'm just like God. I, 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 he, he was so powerful that whenever he opened his mouth to sing, whenever he opened his mouth to sing, that three-part harmony would come out in perfect pitch, that whenever he would begin to sing, that all of the music, the organs, the drums, and all of that was in his voice. He was so powerful that, that everything around him praised, everything in worship, he was praising worship. And this is why, this, can I just throw this in here? It's not in the scriptures, not in the Bible, but I just believe it's true, that, that the reason why you always have so much hell in all the choirs of every church, you always got some hell raisers, you always got somebody, some mess going on in the choir, because that's where the devil came out of. Satan was over the singing, he was able, he was over the worship in heaven. 
And he got lifted up because of the praise. He got lifted up because he started listening to himself. And when you start getting impressed with yourself, it'll cause you to start thinking more highly. And the next thing you know, you start saying, well, the Lord ought to be glad I'm here. You, you start thinking that you're better than what you are. And so God said, listen, he said, I'm not, I'm not going to share my glory uh, or give my glory to another. I'm not going to give my glory to somebody. If it belongs to God, I'm telling you, you better keep your hand off of it. If you want to mess up your blessing, start start walking around appropriating God's blessing. Well, the, the Lord opened the door and bless you now, and you got more now than you ever had. The Lord bless you now, and you're doing better on your job than you ever had. The Lord bless you, and your kids are doing better now. The Lord bless you, and your marriage is doing better now. And then all of a sudden, you start walking around peacocking like you did it. And God says, okay, since you want to act like you did it, then what I'll do is, is I'll step back. And I'll take my hands off of you and I'll let you have what you have. And that's where many of us are right now. God has left us to our own devices in many cases because we try to steal and misappropriate the glory of God. And God said, listen, I'm not going to give my glory to somebody. I want to I keep hitting that. I'm not going to give it. So when somebody comes to you and you know that thing belongs to God, you, oh, no, don't, no, don't, 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 don't do that. God, this belongs to God. God, the one blessed me with this. He the one bless me with this. He the one. I, I couldn't. I, I I couldn't do that. I couldn't do what I do without God. I couldn't. I couldn't go like I go without God. I couldn't stand like I stand without God. You're a strong woman. God knows you're strong. But I couldn't stand without God. Man, you are a faithful man. But I couldn't be what I am without God. You got to give the glory back to God, because an arrogant person tries to wear a crown. <laughs> will wear a crown that's only designed to be put on the head of God. An arrogant person will try to wear a crown that's only designed to be worn on the head of God. And now watch this. So watch what happens. Watch what happens. Watch what happens. Look at, look at, look at, uh, look at Luke chapter 14. Let's show, let me show you what happens. L Luke chapter 14. Luke chapter 14. Because somebody said, I heard you say it. I heard you say it. You said, that's in the Old Testament. We don't need it. We don't live in the Old Testament. We don't live in the Old Testament. We don't live in the Old Testament. Now, I'm going to show you. Somebody put this on the comment line. Luke chapter 14, verse number 11. Luke number number 14, Luke chapter 14, verse number 11. I want to show you. I want to show you. I want to show you that when you put yourself in the wrong place, boy, I'm telling you, you don't want God to do it. You don't want God to do it. You don't want God to bring you down. You don't want God. You, you know, my mom, my mom used to have us in church, and my mama said, now, listen, when I look at you, you know what that means. And I'll sit there and I'll hunt and I'm, I'm acting up and talking and passing notes and, and popping chewing gum. And I can see her looking at me out of the corner of my eye and I would just keep trying to look straight like I didn't see her. But my mom had already trained us that she talked with us through her eyes. So when, when, when she made eye contact, we knew that mean meet her outside. That meant me get up out of that seat and come on outside. And, and, and there'll be many Sundays right down in Sand Bed Baptist Church in Kathleen that I was sitting in the back of the church playing around. And my mom was the, one of the lead ushers. My mom would come up there. And the next thing I know, my mom was standing there. And she said, come on outside. And, and boy, oh, my God. She'd take us outside. And she's like, what did I tell you? What did I tell you? And, 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 and we right there in the vestibule in that little church. And y'all know it's real close there. And, it, and everybody listening because they're trying to hear. They know what's getting ready to happen. And I go out there and my mama whoop me right out there in that vestibule and I'm doing the best I could do not to holler because all my friends were sitting on the back row laughing. And I walk back inside and just lying because I'm crying. What, what did she do? She just talked to me. <laughs> she talked to me all right. She talked to me very well. And she said, you're going to get back up in there and not, not try to distract the service. You're not going to try to interrupt what God is doing because you want to sit here and act a fool in church. Because my mama was trying to show me that there are things that belong to God. And when I'm worshiping, that time belongs to God. When, when I'm in service, that time belongs to God. And, and, and so and so she she kept us in a place. And, and you're right, Sister Lawson. She, she, my mama would pinch you and you, you think you were bleeding. It hurt so bad. But 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 that's what God wants us to see. Now watch this. I want you to see this right here. Look what would happen. Just like my mama told me. My mama said, where you do that, that's where I'm going to get you at. Will you do that? That's what I'm going to straighten you out at. In the store, in the house, and I don't care where you at. That's what I'm going to get you. Now watch what happened. In Luke chapter 14, verse number 11. For everyone who exalts himself, when you try to lift yourself up, shall be humbled. 
and he who humbles himself shall be exalted. God says, when you try to lift yourself up, when you try to elevate yourself above other people, when you try to act like you're already there and you've already arrived, it's all about you. God says, I'm going to bring you down. But when you learn how to humble yourself, when you learn how to recognize that it's, it's about God and not me, when you recognize that the glory belongs to God, God says, when you humble yourself, he says, I'll exhort you. So if I do it myself, God says, I'm going to be brought down. But if I humble myself, God says, I'll raise you up. So, so, so if you want to be raised up, stay humble. If you want to be used by God, stay humble. If you want God to use you mightily, stay humble. Stop bragging. Stop talking about how good you look, how you can cut it, how you can do it. Stop talking all that and just remember to stay humble. Now, let's stay with the word. Let's stay with the word. Stay with the word. Now, watch this right here. Um, um, because uh, one of the things that I've seen in the church is, 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 is we are humble. Lord, help me to say this right. We are humble until we see the wrong kind of people come in the church. I've seen this too many times as pastor. And even before I was a pastor, even before I was even preaching, uh, I, I've seen this. Uh, where 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 we are humble, uh, but there are certain kinds of people that we just perceive that we are better than them, and so uh, 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 and, and when they come, they can come, but they need to know they not they're not quite there yet. And, and, and we've been in the church all our life. That's why so many churches can't grow. That's why so many churches can't prosper, because we got people that listen. We got people that's been around the church a long time, and now they think they own the church. Now they think they belong because my family been here 50, 60, 70 years. So what? So what? My, my such and such, my great granddaddy built the laid the foundation. My folk did it right here. And we was over there when this and that and all that. And, 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 and if the church belongs to God, why are you trying to tell me how long you've been here? If the church belongs to God and you understand that in your mind, why are you trying to tell me about your duration in the church? Why are you trying? And there are people that come in the church, they just got saved, and then here comes some arrogant Christian that's been around the church for a long time that thinks it's okay to try to be judgmental of folk that just came out of the stuff that God brought you out of. It, 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 they think it's okay to, to talk down to people that are still struggling with some stuff that God, watch this, now, oh, ho, 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 thank, thank you. They, they're struggling with some stuff that you know how to better camouflage. You still struggling with the same thing, but you just learn now in the church how to camouflage it a little bit better. And now here we are now with our arrogant selves sitting up there when folk come to the church and we're trying to look down on them and talk down. To, well, well you, when you've been here a little bit long as I have, then you, you can say what you are. No, 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 no. When they come into the body, they got just as many rights and privileges as anybody else. God saved them. Their salvation is not a workup kind of salvation. They got saved. And their salvation is not less than yours. And yours is not more than theirs. It, it is the same. So when I'm saved, when I'm coming to church and people come, I don't care if they smell like dope or smell like alcohol. If God save them, they save. If God deliver them, they deliver. And so we don't have a right, we don't have a right to walk around arrogant like we are better than they are. And there are people, I don't want them sitting next to me. I don't want them around me. Why not? Why not? God can be around us. God can be around us. When we weren't clean, God, God was around us. When we didn't have it all, quote, unquote, together, God was there for us. When God had to wait on you while you were still lying and dipping and slipping, God was there. But now all of a sudden people can come into church and we're so high and we're so mighty and we're so lifted up until we've forgotten what it was that God brought us out of. We've forgotten that it was God who picked us up and cleaned us up. It was God who turned our life around. And sometimes we just get too arrogant. We get too lifted up and we forget. Arrogance will make you forget. I remember being in the military, and some of y'all folks can remember this. When, 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 I, was in, when I was in the military, we, 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 it is the tick of me. Whenever, 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 whenever I would meet somebody, I would tell them, where are you from? I said, man, I'm from Warner Robins, Georgia. Where is that from? About for an hour, 15 minutes south of Atlanta. 
I wasn't ashamed of where I was from. It didn't bother me. And I, and I, uh, but I would always meet these folks. Where are you from? Oh, I'm from Atlanta. I don't care where. Where are you from? Atlanta. What what part of Atlanta? Oh, Atlanta, Atlanta. And then and then, and then, then they start telling them. I said, Well, it's not really in Atlanta. It 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 it, it, it 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 right on the outskirts of Atlanta. What what is it? Harlem, Georgia, uh, or 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 uh, Dallas, Georgia, or or they would come up with some some other hole in the wall town throughout the, the state of Georgia, and, and they would come up with these. But everybody wanted to be, and everybody wanted to come off with this persona like they were from somewhere they weren't, because they 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 were ashamed of where they came from, and 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 too many of us in the body of Christ, we are just like that. You, you, you don't want to tell people that God had delivered you was a drunk. You don't want to tell people that you was a dope head. You don't want to tell people you was a straight up hoe. You don't want to tell people that God had to do all kinds of things to straighten you out. You don't want you want to, I'm from Atlanta. <laughs> That's how you want to come across. But God says, remember and, and don't carry yourself in such a way that you forget where you were, forget what God had to do in your life. And then it causes you to start looking down on people that are only guilty of the same sin God had to deal with you on. Come on, somebody say amen. Amen. Preach, teach Macintosh, preach, teach Macintosh, teach Macintosh, teach Macintosh. God said, he said, I want you to stay humble. Now, now I want you to understand this right here. Why? Why is that so important? Why is it so important for, for us to stay humble? Why is this important? God warns us, stay humble humble look at look at uh james somebody put this on the comment line for me james chapter four and verse number six james chapter four and verse number six uh uh how many know we need the grace of god we need the grace of god i need the grace you need the grace of god we need his favor his unmerited favor. We need it in our lives. We need it in our home. We need it on our job. But look at what happens here. This is what it says. But he gives greater grace to who? To the humble. Therefore, it is said, God is opposed. He is in opposition. He is in conflict with the proud. Hear me? But God gives grace, favor to those who are humble. Do y'all hear that? Do you hear what he said? He said, he says, God is in op God won't even deal. He don't even want to deal with you if you're proud. He said, He resisted the proud. <clears throat> he resisted the proud, but God gives grace to the humble. If you want the grace of God operating in you, you got to stop acting so proud. Lord, I don't cry. You get, and, and I, I, oh my God. Can, can I just tell you, uh, uh, everybody's not trying to get in your business. Everybody's not, you know, and I don't want people to know what's going on with me. I don't want, what? <laughs> why? How did you, I just don't want folks in my, it, no. Pride, 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 pride. God, I want your glory. I want your presence in my life. God, I want your grace. And God says, the only way you're going to get it is you've got to stay humble. I want to be you, stay humble. God, I want to be used by you. Stay humble. Because if you get lifted up, if you start making it be about you, God says, I'm going to resist you. I'm going to resist you. And the last thing we need in this era, in this time, in this critical era that we're walking, is we don't need God resisting us. But I want God to, to welcome. I want God to use me. I want God to, 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 to be pleased with my life and, 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 and use me to be a blessing to other folk. But he said, the only way I'm going to do that is you've got to stay humble, humble. Now, now, what is this right here? Watch this right here. Another thing that, 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 that pride does, that we're seeing it right now, 
Oh my God, we're saying it right now. Pride. Pride will bring you disgrace. When you disgrace, when, when you come to a place where you won't listen to anyone, you you won't you won't take heed or, or, or counsel from anyone. Folk trying to tell you, you hey, you need to chill out. Hey, you need to slow down. You you just just don't keep going and going and going and going. But watch this. I want to show you. I want to show you. That's what's going on in our country today. We got one. I'm not calling them names. We got one that folk been trying to tell him to slow down, sir. Sir, you're doing too much. You need to come down. You need to humble yourself. No, he wouldn't listen. Wouldn't listen. We got the events of today that unfolded today. Somebody put this on the comment line. Proverbs chapter 11, verse number two. I'm going to show you what 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 when when you don't when you don't deal with your pride. Let me show you what happens. Let me show you what happens. Um, Proverbs 11. Somebody put that on the comment line. Proverbs 11, chapter, verse number two. Thank you, sis. It says, when pride comes, y'all hear that? Then comes dishonor. But with the humble is wisdom. God says, he says, when pride comes, when pride comes up in your life, he says, then comes dishonor or then comes the fall. When you won't listen, when you keep just being lifted up, when you're just walking with your nose in the air, now you, when your nose so high in the air that you can't see the hold in front of you. And so you end up falling. You end up tripping over something that if you'd have been humble, you could have seen it. He says, he says, he says, when pride comes, dishonor comes. When you won't listen, you set yourself up for dishonor. When you won't adhere and humble. Now notice all of this. This is us humbling ourselves. Notice this is us humbling ourselves. And when we do it, God says, you're going to gain wisdom from it. Because some wisdom, some wisdom God gives you, he just drops it in your spirit. Or, or you go through um, 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 teaching experiences. But the other wisdom that you learn, when you watch what other people do, you get some wisdom by watching, by observation. You get wisdom by watching. So I, I I sit there and you watch and you say now nah, now nah, that guy just got he just got locked up for that no I don't need to get locked up for that so I'm gonna learn from his mistake she she just got she just got she just lost her job for doing that I don't need to do that so I'm I'm gaining wisdom from my humility because I'm watching and I'm learning from the the successes or the failures of other people and so when I learn how to do that and stop acting like I know everything. And, and, and we, boy, oh my God, we've got so many people around the, around the body that think they know every, oh my God, everything. Now I don't care what happened. You know, oh, don't, don't talk to him. I know how to do it. I know how to do it. And doesn't that make you mad when well, you've been on a job for years and years and you know the job inside out and they bring some new greenhorn in there and, and you're trying to tell them something they won't listen. And then they go out there and mess it up and then they want to act like you didn't tell them nothing. Then they want to say, oh, you, you sure told me. No, I, I was telling you, but you didn't want to hear it. I was trying to show you, but you didn't want to listen. I was trying to explain it, but you were talking while I was talking. And, 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 and so that, that, that shows you that when you don't listen, you'll end up embarrassing and dishonoring your own self. Now, let's look. Let's look again. Come on now. Come on. Stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. I told you we we're going to do some calisthenics tonight. Look over. <laughs> no, oh, on your job all the time. Praise the Lord. Look at Proverbs 16 and 18. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Proverbs 16 and 18. Proverbs 16 and 18. Probably somebody put that on the comment line. Oh, thank, thank you, Pastor Bowling. Jesus Juniors. Amen. We all have seen some of them Jesus Juniors running around. Amen. Uh, uh, Proverbs, uh, uh, Proverbs 16 and 18. And the word says, and the word says, Proverbs 16 and 18. Pride goes before destruction. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a stumbling or fall. When you are lifted up, when you have walking in pride, it says it won't, it won't be long before you end up, why, 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 why does the proud end up in destruction? Because proud people won't hear instruction. Proud people won't take correction. Proud people cannot be dissuaded 
beyond their own opinion. They only listen to their own voice. They only think that they know everything. And so they're talking and they're talking. Oh, I know what I'm doing. I got it. I got it. I got it. And so sometime with them, sometime with them, though you don't want them to hurt, sometimes you got to just step back and let them fall. Sometimes you just got to step back and say, Lord, catch them before they go down too far. Sometimes you got to just step back and say, Lord, you be with them, God. Because some people are so high that, that, that the only one that can reach them is God. Sometimes they're so lifted up that the only one that can, that can truly get their attention is God. And so God said their pride, their arrogance, their haughty spirit is what now have them lifted up and it's going to cause them to end up falling on their face. Falling on the face. Now, I want y'all to get this right here. Um, there's a phrase called the mother sin. Y'all, somebody put that on the, on the comment line for me. The mother sin sin the mother mother the mother sin it is the mother sin to other sins some believe in their teachings uh, that arrogance is the mother sin to other sins in other words it is your pride that causes you to get caught up in some of the things you get caught up in. Stay with me. It's your pride that causes you to think that, listen, uh, 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 I can do this and not get caught. It's your arrogance to think I can steal, I can cheat, I can lie, I can do all it because I'm intellectually more advanced and up and, 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 and I can do all these other things and you fill in the blank. It is the mother, it is the thing that causes me to be emboldened. It's the thing that causes me to think that I can do this and, and I can, and, and if I have to, I can step between the raindrops and not get wet. That I can, I can touch a hot fire and not be burned. That I can do all of these things because arrogance will make you think that you're more than what you are. Arrogance. It is, it is considered by many to be the mother sin or it is the, the birthplace for other sins in our life. When I, when I won't listen, when, when, I, when, I, when, I, when I just keep trying to do it my own way and, and, and just listen, we, we got family members, we got friends, we got folk that if they would have listened, they wouldn't be in the mess they're in right now. If they would have listened, they wouldn't be financially where they are right now. If they would have listened, they, they wouldn't be economically and socially where they are now. If they would have listened, their marriage may have been saved. If they would have listened, maybe they could have kept the job. If they would have listened, maybe they could have could have could have found out how to how to finish school and do the things they need. If they would have listened, but they would not listen. And so they kept doing it their own way. They kept trying to work their own thing and they kept trying to go about it their own way. And, 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 and they kept, and, and, and watch it. It kept the, the worst. They kept getting worse. They kept getting worse. They kept getting worse. They kept getting worse because the pride, listen to me, their pride wouldn't let them ask for help. Pride. But what I think of and like about God is God, <laughs> is God will use trouble to open a mouth that pride has, I wish somebody have put that on the comment line, that God will use trouble to open a mouth that pride has shut. When you say, I'm not asking nobody for that, but God knows how to turn the heat up on you. And he knows how to open your mouth and make you ask for the stuff you say you wasn't gonna ask for. He'll make you come back and you and the people you thought you never asked for, the people you thought I, I'd rather not have it than to have to speak to them. I'd rather not have to deal than have to put up. But God has a way. I'm telling you now, God has a way. That's why you better be careful how you handle people. That's why you better be careful how you talk to people. That's why it better be, you better be careful how, how, how you treat other people. Because God has a way when, when, when you get in a position and now you need something and the thing that you need, God said, I'm going to put it in their hand. 
and you're not going to be able to get it from nobody else. You're going to have to go back to them. And God says, I'm going to put it in their hand and I'm going to humble you. I'm going to humble you to make you have to go back and do what you said you wouldn't do. And I know I'm right about that. I know I'm right about that. And God, and God would use, he'll use trouble. He'll use situational issues in your life. He'll allow the rain to fall. He allows you to get in your, your pride to get you in something that your money can't get you out of. He'll allow you to get in some situation that your family can't get you out of. And God says, I'm the one that you looked over, the one that many times you thought you were better than, God says, I'll use them as a catalyst and a tool, a doorway for you to get out of. But your pride don't have to be swallowed. You're going to have to deal with your pride. And, and 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 so and so 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 that's why it's we, we better be mindful because the people you step on going up are the same people you're gonna pass on your way back down. You better be careful. Now I want y'all to get this, and I'm about to wrap this thing up. I'm about to get this thing, I'm about, about to get out of here. I don't want to make nobody mad tonight. I want you to understand this right here. All prideful people, somebody put this on the comment line for me. All prideful people are not bad people. You, you can be a proud or an arrogant person and actually still be a good person. Let, I'm going to prove that to you in just a moment. You, you can be a prideful or arrogant person and yet still be, quote unquote, a good person. Now, let me, let me show you what I'm talking about. If y'all remember, just somebody put this on this scripture on it. Uh, 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 Matthew chapter 26, verse number 31 through, uh, through 35. Matthew chapter 26, verse 31 through 35. I want to show you. I, I, want, I want to show you that you can be a good person. I'm not being facetious or, or sarcastic. You can honestly be a good person and still be walking in pride. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let me show you. When you start thinking highly, let me show you. Let me show you. It's in the word. Uh, Matthew 26. 31 through 35. Let's, let me show you what it says. Then Jesus said to them, all of you will be made to stumble because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have been raised, I will go to Galilee. Hear me, hear me. Here's Peter, good man. Here's Peter. A good man. Peter answered and said to him, even, even if all are made to stumble because of you, I, watch when you start talking about I, I will never be made to stumble. Here Jesus, the son of God, just said, all of you are going to stumble because of what's getting ready to happen to me. But Peter stands up, this good man, Genuinely a good man, lover of God, but he was arrogant in that God just spoke and said what was going to happen. And his arrogance is such, his pride is such that he would dare contradict God's very words. He says, now all of these others, they might stumble, but I will never stumble. Do y'all remember who else said I will quite a few times? That was Satan. That was Satan before he was kicked out of I will ascend. I will make my throne. I will do this. I will do that. Peter made the same mistake. I will never be made to stumble. And listen to what Jesus said to him. He says, surely I say to you that this night before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Now listen to what Peter said. Peter still, the light bulb still didn't come on to Peter's mind because he was so proudful, because he was so arrogant. Listen, listen, he was a good man though. Peter said, even if I have to die with you, I will not deny you. I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Now they didn't say nothing when Jesus first said it. But when Peter started talking in pride, when Peter started getting lifted up in arrogance, then now all of a sudden these other 11 stood up talking about, well, Lord, if you, we're we, we going to die with you. We gonna, you they're going to have to kill us with you. But we, we're going to stand with you. We're not going to deny you. And the record goes that Peter truly did 
deny him three times before the crop clove crowed. Now, he was a good man. Now, let me give you another example. Look, somebody put this on the comment line. Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. Verse number 35 through 37. Mark chapter 10. I want to show you. You can be a good person, sincere, love God. Not mean, not malicious, not out here in all kind of mess. But, but you can still be walking in pride because you're still thinking more highly of yourself than what you ought to. Let's look at let's look at this and see if we got some more examples. Let's let's look at this and say we got some more examples. Y'all stay with me. Uh, 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 verse 35 said, then James and John, the son of Zebedee, came to him saying, teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. And Jesus answered and said to them, what do you want me to do for you? And they said, grant us that we may sit one on your right and one on your left hand in your glory. Here they are. They wanted to sit next to Jesus on the right and the left side when he got glorified, when he got lifted up and exalted. Pride. They were good men, but they didn't ask. Jesus asked him, and Jesus went on to ask him, can you suffer the death that I'm going to suffer? Can you die the type of death? Oh, oh no, we don't want to deal with that. No, we don't want to deal with that. We don't want to deal with that. But, 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 but watch this. I, I just want two more scriptures. Y'all can just bear with me. I just got two more scriptures I want, I want to help y'all. I want to help somebody with. Somebody said, Pastor, you, you really hit me tonight. How do I deal with my pride? I want to give you, I want to give you a surefire way to deal with pride. How do I deal with it? Find yourself some honest friends. If you want to really confront your pride issue, find somebody that, that you will empower to tell you the truth about you. Find yourself some good friends, somebody that you trust to tell you the truth about you. Because Proverbs 27 and six says, it says, faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. If you want to be, if you want, if you want to know the truth, you know, sometimes we only hang around people that, that echo what we say, that agree with everything and foolishness that we say. But if you really want to find out where you are, do I do I really come off like I'm arrogant? Do I do I come off like I'm 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 I'm, I'm prideful and haughty and like I'm better than folks and all that kind? Of, it, you know, and, and then watch it. You got to know the difference between being being self confident, because some people that are not confident in themselves, and you come in being self confident, they'll look at your self confidence as being arrogance, and those are two different things. It's, it's an internal thing. You got to find somebody that can tell you the truth about you. And watch this. And when they tell you the truth about you, don't argue with them and don't fall out with them about the truth you empowered them to tell you. Find somebody like that. Last scripture I'm going to read for you tonight. Last scripture is Romans 12, verse number three. Find a good friend to tell you. And whatever you do, Ask God in your prayer life, God help me not to think more highly of myself than what I ought to. Romans chapter 12, verse number three. The word says, for I say through the grace given to me to everyone who is among you. Hear this, beloved. Think not to think of himself more highly than he ought. Don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to. Don't, 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 don't think of yourself, but he said, but, but think soberly for as God has dealt to each a measure of faith. He said, you've got to come to a place where you recognize that, that baby, it's not about you, that, that, that you, 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 you may have done a lot of things. You may be making good money. You may be riding nice, living in a nice home. You got all that stuff, but don't let that stuff cause you to start thinking that you're better than what you really are. Don't let it start thinking that, that you're more higher than what you really are. He says, he says, don't think that you're more high, more highly of yourself than what you ought to think. You ought to think high of yourself. That's what the text is saying. You ought to think high of you. You ought to carry yourself with self-respect. You ought to think high. You ought to think personal. You know, when you go out, you don't look just any kind of way. You don't need to go out in the street because you ought to think highly of yourself enough that you know I I, I got to deport myself and I got to make sure that I'm, pre I'm presentable when I leave my home. Uh, uh, and not, but I'm not going to get into all that. Lord, don't let me get in that. Tonight. But 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 
but but but to think soberly. In other words, uh, uh, keep your mind clear, clear thought, clear clear vision. As each one of us, God has dealt a measure of faith. And so that's what I want to share with you all tonight. Uh, arrogance. Lord, help me uh, to not be arrogant. Help me uh, to confront my arrogance or high thinking or, 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 or crooked thinking, whatever you want to call it, uh, so that I don't, I don't miss out on my blessing uh, because of my thinking was wrong, because of my processing of things was wrong. And, and if we can do that, then I guarantee God will, God will be able to use us. Because remember what I said, he said, I will not share. I will not give my glory to another. God wants his glory for himself. So when God blesses you, when he starts blessing you, don't you mess around and get crazy when folks start talking how well you look. Oh, girl, you're so beautiful. You're just so beautiful. You better start learning how to tell God, thank you. Whatever I have, it belongs to God. Whatever I have, I have because God blessed me with it. Whatever I'm going to get is because God's going to bless me with it. And that's, that's it. That's how it functions. It all belongs to him. When God sees that, I can, I can, he can trust me with his glory. When he can trust me to give the praise back to him, God says, I can trust, I can bless you even more then. But when he gets it and you start, he bless you with a car and then now you can't come to church because you're washing your car on Sunday. He bless you and you, well, you can't come to church. Oh, I got to clean my house. What? That's the house God just blessed you with. And you, now you can't even come to church because you got to clean the house that he just blessed you with. Don't, don't, don't insult God. Don't insult God. He blessed you with a job and now you're working so much you can't even come to church. Don't, don't insult God. You, you, you got to you, take it, be serious with God. If God is blessing you, listen, I'm going to say this and somebody put this on the line. I'm gonna, I promise you this is my last, the last time I'm going to tell you, I'm, I'm going to tell you, God will never bless you to the point of separating himself from you. Hear me. He will not bless you to the point of separating himself from you. In other words, he ain't going to bless you with, he going to give you a job and then now you can't never come to church. No, that's not God. No, that's you being greedy sometimes. You can't be there all the time. I get that. But I, I, I used to bust folks out even at our church in there. Oh, 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 I got to go to work. Why? Because you volunteered to be there. They, they paying her time and a half. But all money is not good money. Because look at, you're starving on one side. And now look, look. Look what happened. You, you, you missing out on what God has for you. God is not going to bless you if you allow the blessing to take you away from the blesser. You got to make sure you give God time. Give God what belongs to him. That stuff, the tithe, the time, whether it's your finances or your time. If he gives you 168 hours in a week, 168 hours in a week, you mean to tell me you two hours out of that is too much? You mean God can do all of that? And I, and I go and I give all of my time to the school. I give all my time to the job, to the children, to everybody else who wants some of my time. And then when it comes time to give time to God, oh, I'm so tired. I got to rest because I got to go to work tomorrow. I'm so tired. I got to do this for this folks and that folk. And God is saying, I'm the one that enabled you to do it, but you won't even give me what belongs to me. Can he trust you? I'm finished. I'm finished. I'm finished. I'm finished. But God bless you all tonight. I'm telling you, I was feeling this thing today when I was reading, when I was getting ready for this lesson tonight. And, 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 and I'm telling you, we're going to pick up here. And I got another one coming up next week. We're going we're gonna to pick up with another attribute that, that can keep us messed up if we're not careful, if we're not mindful, amen, of the things of God. And, and, and that's, what we, that's what we want to deal with. That's what we want to continue to be, uh, continue to be on. Amen. I think I might deal with self-control, self-control next next week. Dealing with self-control. I had to cuss them out. They, they, I had to do it. I had to put these hands on them. I want to talk. I think I'm going to talk about that. Talk about that self-control next next Wednesday night at 630. Be here. Be here. God bless you all. And it's so great to see everybody online. <laughs> I want you to, uh, if you can, please, ma'am, and please, sir, uh, Go out and just share this, share this, um, uh, this lesson tonight, please, ma'am, sir. Please share this on your page. I want, I want, I want everybody to be able to hear this message tonight. 
uh, because somebody needs to hear that God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. He gives his favor to the humble. Stay humble. Keep yourself in a position where God can use you. And I guarantee God will show up when you need him the most. God bless you. Is that Pastor Bolton? Bless you, man. Bless you now. Amen. We'll be back. We'll be back. We'll be back next week. Stay encouraged. Listen, I want you all to continue to pray for our church mother, Mother Askew. She, she, she's getting better. Um, we thank God for brother, deacon, and, and, and sister um, Askew, um, that, that God has healed them from COVID. Um, we want to continue to pray for our sister Anna Askew, her, her mother, uh, went home to be with the Lord um, um, a day or so ago. Uh, we want to pray for uh, for their entire family. They already uh, were dealing with the loss of another loved one recently. And before they had closure on that, this happened. And so that's a tough, tough position to be in. But I believe that God can give them the comfort and the strength that they're going to need for this hour. Um, so please, ma'am and sir, pray for, pray for their family, um, that God will, will, will strengthen them. Uh, additionally, I'm asking you to pray for... Uh, um, uh, Brother Zellner, I got called today. He called me, and I want to keep him lifted in prayer. Um, that 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 God will strengthen him and be with him and his wife during this time that they're 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 going through the same process now. Uh, but but we just want to continue to lift one another up and 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 be there for one another. Um, that God will 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 give us what we need and what we must have. Um, I'm going to say this, and I'm going to uh, I want you to pray uh, uh, about coming to church on Sunday. We we we're having our drive up service. It is we social distance. You don't even have to get out of your car, and we have a wonderful time right on the church ground. You come out there, pull up at ten o'clock. Uh, you don't even have to let the window down. We the music, the the sermon, all that stuff comes right inside your car through your radio. And uh, we just we just have a great time in the name of the Lord. Um, so if you can come out Sunday morning at 10 o'clock at, at the, the, the Green Grove Baptist Church in Elko, Georgia. Amen. We'll be there at 10 o'clock. Us and, and Friendship have combined forces, one church in two locations, uh, two churches in one location. Uh, be there on Sunday at 10 o'clock. Um, uh, additionally, additionally, I, I want you to... Uh, to um, uh, to be watching out tomorrow. I'm supposed to be getting um, this COVID vaccine, and 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 I believe that um, um, we've been asked to do like a little journal, and I'm going to do like a little video journal to show folks the progress and how it affects and how it does and how it feels. Um, um, because I want people to 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 make decisions based on facts and not fear. Um, do your homework, and then don't don't allow yourself to get caught up in and 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 the, the the peanut gallery talking and folks are, I'm not gonna do this I'm not gonna do that but when four thousand people are dying every day and it's killing uh, overwhelmingly killing more blacks than white um, uh, you, you better make some sound decisions uh, you better make some wise decisions and uh, and so that's what we want to do and I'm gonna do that tomorrow uh, and prayerfully we'll be able to get it videoed and um, um, we'll be able to start posting that so folks can see. Um, um, the results and see how it affects me. And hopefully that'll give you some uh, encouragement if you desire, at least you'll be able to know that um, Pastor did it and, and he's okay. And um, so God bless you and God keep you as my prayer tonight. Thank you for tuning in. And if God says the same, we will see you. Oh, thank you, Sister Audrey. She says she got it yesterday. Amen. She's still, she's still alive. You're still breathing and still kicking. Amen. So we just, we just want to be a blessing. And uh, I'm believing and trusting God for greater things to come. Stay humble and keep giving God the glory. Macintosh, amen. Let me see what I got for you as we leave. Let me see, can I find something here to leave, let you leave on? Ah. Oh, here we go. Now. Bless you too. Bless you, Sister Daughtry, Sister Stripling, Linda Stripling. I love God. I love God. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? I love him. I love God. You love God. What's wrong with you? Somebody put it on the timeline. What's wrong with you? I don't think that I can live no other way. Bless you, Pastor Ask you, man. We love you all now. I'm forgiven, I'm 
I love God, y'all, and I love the people of God also. God bless you. You all have a wonderful night now. Back to Tarsha. I love God.